Two Guys Coffee and Business Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. This is Season 2, Episode 3. And today, Tom Dorch is back. I'm alive. Don't worry. <laughs> How does it feel to be back? It feels good. Did you no, miss the podcast? I did. <laughs> As I said, I wasn't here for it. Yep. It's all right, though. You're back. We're ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Michael and Trevor Tolo, and we all know Tom Dorch. Today, we're going to talk about... Uh, how to get the most out of your ERP system. Uh, a couple tips you want to look at before purchasing, when you have, and, you know, some more tips when you have the ERP system and how to uh, add on to that. And I think Tom is going to start off with his list. And yeah. We'll go from yeah, there. Yeah, I, I got a little list uh, I put together. I think first of all, you gotta choose the right ERP system, <laughs> which is of course Microsoft Dynamics. What? <laughs> <laughs> how could that be? <laughs> I completely agree with you, though. Yeah, I, I think that uh, what's really important is you got to find one that'll be able to grow as you grow. Because mm-hmm. I think what's what really helps implementations is if um, you kind of pay for what you need right away and now to help kind of get you started, and then you just add more functionality as needed. So, right, because if you plan on your business to continually grow, it's right. going to evolve, right? Right. And no matter what anybody says. No business is the same as your business, right? So you got to have the proper ERP system for your business. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, next time I have to say you got to choose the right partner. What? Which is Why? of course solution you, systems. You need a partner? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. So I got a couple <coughs> reasons why I think you need a partner. Um, one of them is they kind of manage the whole project, and uh, so you don't have to stick one of your own employees into a project manager role for <laughs> an implementation. Uh, partners usually, I mean, at least we do, we have project managers ready and available to help you out. Uh, they give you best practice advice. Um, just kind of make sure everybody's on what top of what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But, some, sorry. Oh, yeah. So I guess uh, one thing though that as a business you have to do is make sure you're telling the project manager <laughs> everything that you guys are doing or that you want to do just so that they can right because if you change something and then they want to update something with the changes that were not made right it becomes a problem and an issue right which then equals more time more money you know more more attention right communication is key yeah it's it's very important to establish a great relationship with your partner yeah you know us as partners, we want to help you with, with, with the ERP system, ERP system. We feel good when it's done up and running and everything is great, working phenomenal, your business is you know, more profitable. We, we love that. Yeah, it's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the business of helping people. <laughs> yeah. When you look at it, yes. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if someone should start an NPO for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I guess then I would say, uh, maybe involve the end users in the research process just because they are going to be the ones that are using it in the end. Exactly. Very important to get the feedback from them. Right. Yeah, you want what they like and what they dislike. Right. And then uh, another thing kind of going off of that, you want to make sure that management is on board with the implementation. <laughs> so I can't tell you how many times we'll kind of go down the path of uh, talking to somebody and they're in the process of choosing here. Right, they're, they're choosing an ERP system and yet their management has no idea that anybody's even looking for anything. Yeah, exactly. There's no buy-in, you're not gonna... It makes it difficult, especially from a, a sales point, right? Because right. The process takes twice as long, right. and then even when you get the green light, you really don't have the green light. Right. You know? Yeah. But, uh, I am. I see that. I, I don't know, I think that uh, some of the most important I guess factors for uh, for success in almost any implementation are, are, are like prioritizing the project, mm-hmm. uh, setting the direction of the project oh, where you want to go, sure. allocating the resources, uh, and making sure that there is communication. Yes, and that's kind of what management does. So, <laughs> I right, feel like they manage things. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's what they do. So, <laughs> uh, it's very important that they're on board. Um, and another thing I think is uh, you don't want to have too little training. A lot of people try and save money yes. by uh, not really training their end users. 
But right. what happens if you aren't trained on something? You're not going to use it. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of organizations, they think that once the initial training is complete, that they're done. Right. Right. We're going to be expert users, power end users. We got this all. Right. It doesn't work that way. No. You need ongoing tra training. Yep. Which, speaking of, we are in our training facilities right now. Yeah. <laughs> state-of-the-art, multiple computers, and we also offer an online university to train people. Yeah. So we've got you covered. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of uh, that's what you got. That, that's the stuff that sticks out in my head. Uh, what do you think about it? Right, so I took a couple notes and So before you actually purchase the software, right. while you're in the, the process of looking at it, I think it's important to define your needs. Oh, so yeah. whether you need like cloud or on-premise, or you know, you want to know your industry requirements for your particular industry, so you can develop your software and find the software that's right to handle you know your requirements for that industry. Yeah. I also right. have uh, <laughs> this is kind of biased because we're a Microsoft partner, but <laughs> choose a product that can be enhanced to connect your business through integrations. So for us, you know. If you purchase, say, Business Central, you can add, you know, Sales, Power BI, Excel, part yeah. of the integration, Outlook, Word, all those good Microsoft products. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like uh, a lot of companies um, are ending up needing a lot of those separate yes. um, solutions just because it's hard to find something that'll do it all. Right, and the, and the beauty about it is, too, is that it saves you a lot of time because once it's integrated, you don't have to close down Word to go back to Business Central, to find your information, open up Word to enter your information. It's all, you know, especially with the Outlook at it. Yeah. I mean, is that not beautiful? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> Everything done right then and there. All right. So, I invest in ongoing software training we covered. I got choose a software that is continually investing in themselves, or software company, sorry, that is continually investing in themselves and developing their product. So meaning, you, you mean know, like Microsoft? Yes, just like <laughs> Microsoft. What a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're right, so you can purchase a less expensive software. So what happens if that less expensive software, the company gets axed, or they decide to can that product and stop updating it? You know what I mean? You can't grow unless your software is able to grow with you. Right. It's a, it's a huge, huge issue. Yeah, I guess kind of adding on to that, I guess, uh, let's say support. What about support? Yes. Yeah. Right. That goes away too. Training as well, the right. support, training, everything. Yeah. And you had mentioned that Microsoft, so Microsoft, I got a little note here, continues to update their software, wants to make users more productive by reducing the time needed to switch between apps, and is also heavily invested in future technologies like artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and much more. So you want to find a company that is willing to put the research and development in, take the chances, to make the product better over the long run. Yeah, and I actually uh, saw somewhere that Microsoft's putting somewhere near like a billion dollars wow. in the research and development. That's one billion people. That's more than one billion. Most other systems making sales in a year. Yes, I mean that is a hundred thousand dollars more than I have in my bank account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking mucho zeros. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, oh, leverage the software's mobile capabilities. Meaning, use the tablet, use the phone. These are all great functions that, you know, help you get the most out of your ERP system. Yeah. I have, don't be fooled by a software that claims to be industry specific, right? It sounds nice, it's great, out of the box, put it up, run, done, and everything's great. In reality though, is your business is gonna continually evolve if you're growing. Uh, so having a software that has the capabilities for customization, it's a huge plus in my eyes. You know, like I said earlier, nobody's business is exactly like your business. So why should your business software not be specific to what it is your business does, right? Which involves customization or as sales like to say, tailoring. Yeah. <laughs> but, all right, I have a uh, plan for added expenditures during implementation. Uh, Nobody likes this part, yeah. but like we said, like you said, more training may be required know what you think so it's gonna cost some more money you know your work schedule may change which may lengthen the project or, or whatnot 
Or, you know, as you're going through, you might discover that you need more customizations right. to make the software better for your company. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to say is I feel like uh, what a lot of companies, once they realize how customizable mm -hmm. the system is or how, how well it can be tailored to their needs, um, they're like, oh, yeah, now I want to do this and this and this. And right. then it's they're like, wait, we just spent a whole bunch of money. So it's the cookie monster effect. Right? Yeah. When it's so good and you love it, you want more and more and more. Right. <laughs> Completely agree. All right, involve actual end users, which you talked about. Oh, here's a good one. Decommission legacy applications. So what I mean by this is shut down your old software. Don't try to run two softwares parallel with each other. Nobody's going to be able to enter the proper records in both software databases, which is just going to create a big mess. It's hard for accounting to close the books and, and balance everything. It's just, it, it's just not good, right? <laughs> Yeah, people are already working as many hours exactly. as they possibly can. I mean, you don't want to even have them do double the work now. It's, right. Yeah, running parallel is, uh, I just don't. There's no point. Yeah. Invest in some sort of backup for your current system. Yeah. Azure, call us. <laughs> yeah. We'll help you out with it. All right. Oh, here's one. Make sure your software's current. So what I mean by that is, like, if you take your phone as, a, as an example, Every time you get a new update for your phone, it's fixing prior problems. Yes, sometimes it creates new problems. But in the long run, it's, it's fixing problems, making things go more smooth. Plus, if you have customizations like ISVs, like Jet Reports, or, or whatnot, and they update their software, and you don't update yours, it might not be compatible, as compatible with each other, create errors, and issues. You know, before you know it, your whole workday is gone, and you know, you sit at your desk like Tom Gorge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> doing triple the work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a couple more here. All right. Uh, if you have Microsoft ERP software, oh, stay current on your enhancement plan. Oh, yeah, that's big. Yes, it's big because without being current on your enhancement plan, you can't add additional users, you can't add additional functionalities, plus you lose your price protection for how much like a user costs, that type of thing, as well as if you if you want, let's say you want to upgrade out of the board, you haven't paid your enhancement plan for two years. Back pay, fees, yes, nobody likes that. Oh. <laughs> so stay current on the enhancement plan. Yeah. Then we don't have to call. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. That's what I got. Yeah. So I think it's pretty good. We covered the basis on why you know how to get the most value out of your AP. Yeah. Got any more ideas? Call us. <laughs> That's what we're here for. It's what yes. we do. It makes it as simple as can be. 847-590-3000. We should make a jingle out of that. Yeah, we should. <laughs> like United Auto Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. All right, well, that, uh, that wraps it up for Season 2, Episode 3. Yeah, thanks for uh, listening, and feel free to comment, call us, whatever you, whatever you want. We're yes. here. And do not forget to subscribe on iTunes. We are not on iTunes. We want some people to subscribe. It makes us feel good. We sleep better at night. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks.